in today's society, there's something so sweet about a written letter. Ask your children each to think of one person that they're grateful for and then have them write a letter simply saying three things they like most about that person and then mail them. Welcome to the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. Empowering healthy hearts and happy homes, one imperfect day at a time. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. I am your host, Anna Fulmer. Well, I don't know about you, but we are celebrating the fact that it is summer. School is done. My kids have officially been in summer for one week. We are slowly getting over the woe is me hour. Do you guys have that in your house? Maybe it's only mine. Maybe it's just my children. But every summer, the first week tends to go, it's like an emotional roller coaster. I mentioned this on Instagram the other day. My kids go from statements like, this is the worst summer ever. I'm so bored. I hate summer. When does school start? To an hour later, they're reading books and playing games and coming up with really fun make-believe ideas. And my heart's so happy. But why can't we just skip the woe is me hour and get right to the creative summer fun? I don't know. I guess it's just like the rite of passage, but maybe that only happens in my home. That being said, not only is today's podcast episode all about summer fun ideas to spend time and make memories together with your kiddos, but it is also in the spirit of saving some money, budget-friendly summer ideas. We're going to talk about over a hundred of them because I don't know about you, but some of the day trips that we like to take and do with the kids, I feel like I have to take out a second mortgage on my house. I mean, some of these places now are so expensive. So about a year ago, I put together, it might be two years ago now, I put together this list of a hundred plus budget-friendly summer fun ideas that you can do as a family. If you're looking for ideas, ways to save money, but still spend some quality fun in the sun together, tune in. I got you covered. All right. We will run through these. And by the way, we have done, I'd say at least 60% of this list. So these are tried and true (laughs) tested. Number one, read books under your bed sheets with a flashlight. Bake cake pops. There's a really cool kit I actually included uh, in the show notes. There's a link that you can buy. We have made these before. They're very sweet. Watch out. Hide a puzzle. Number three, hide a puzzle in each bedroom and complete ones found. My dad used to do this with us when we were kids. He would do this with games as well. But you um, just hide stuff around the house and then you make a little kind of search and find game out of it. And then you do the said puzzle or game in that room once it's found. So number three, hide a puzzle in each bedroom and complete that puzzle once found. I'm telling you guys, your kids will love this stuff. They will love it. Number four, act out a murder mystery. This might depend on the age of your kids. I did include a link to a fun kid-friendly murder mystery party. Number five, sing karaoke, sing karaoke. So my kids love, love singing to any, pretty much the radio, Disney movies, whatever the case may be. So I found these really cool microphones. They all got one for Christmas where it's a Bluetooth connected device. You can connect it to a speaker or whatever, but it's wireless and they each have their own color When they have friends come over to play, it's amazing to me, boy and girl of all ages, my oldest is 10. So of the whole age range, all of them love, love these microphones. So not only is it a microphone that you can just speak into, but it is also a karaoke machine that you can sing to. Link is included. Number five, sing karaoke. Number six, make homemade Play-Doh. We have never done this one. My kids have done it with their grandmother, with Zach's mom. They have made homemade Play-Doh. They love that. Number seven, make homemade ice pops. These are actually not that hard to do. I did include a link that you can um, click on for a kit. If you want a homemade kit, there's also ways to do this with stuff you just have laying around your house. Uh, One little tip here, instead of actually making ice pops, you can just combine fruit juices and put them in an ice cube container 
and then just pop them out. You can like put um, popsicle sticks in them while they freeze and then you just pop them out. Number eight, use fabric markers and draw on old t-shirts or pants. Number nine, make homemade pizzas. We actually do that every Sunday. The kids have fun with that. Number 10, draw with sidewalk chalk. Come up with hopscotch, make a four square. Uh, my kids have really gotten into four square. So this is something we do with frequency now is we will draw a four square um, area on our driveway and play four square. So I should add that to number 10, draw with sidewalk chalk and play four square. Number 11, build with connects. Do you guys remember connects? I, there's so many things to do with these connects. My, my, um, only complaint about these moms, you'll appreciate this is all the pieces people. Huh? <laughs> Why can't we have fun without so many little pieces to lose and step on in my bare feet? Number 12, Play it in your by park. Walk to the park. Do you have any parks around you? Play it in your by park. Number 13, ride bikes. Number 14, create an indoor scavenger hunt. This can get as extensive or simple as you want. I actually included a link to a kit. It's called the family treasure hunt game. Uh, you can run around indoors and out like they have stuff that you can hide all over the place. If you want something that's a little bit more organized or just come up with your own list, hide your own things. You could hide a uh, fun idea would be to hide coins, maybe 25 cent pieces, hide however many that you want and tell each kid you can find uh, just say eight, right? They can each find eight quarters, maybe give clues, maybe don't give clues, whatever, maybe just do one room and then have them take those eight quarters and go to a candy store and they get to buy $2 worth of candy if you have a candy store near you or even just your local gas station. But guys, don't just give them the money. Make it fun for them. I mean, realize this something, this would take no time for you to put together. Just hide a bunch of quarters and create an indoor scavenger hunt. So again, something as simple as that to... Uh, like I said, this kit that I included that has clues and a game board and, uh, you know, it's a little bit more extensive. Number 15, build a fire with sticks collected from your yard. This sounds like the simplest thing in the world. Like what? But kids love this. Kids love this. Get them off their phones, get them outside. Not only does it pick up all the sticks from your yard, but it will also end up in a fun fire that you can sit around. Build a fire with sticks from your yard. Number 16, make your own I spy book. My mom and dad did this for my kids over COVID. They loved it. What they did was they put all kinds of objects. They wrote down the objects and they put them all on shelves in my dad's library, took a picture of it, and then wrote out the things that the kids needed to find. They stuck these printed papers in a plastic sleeve. Do you know what I'm talking about? The plastic sleeves are protectors for papers. And then the kids could circle them with um, like whiteboard markers. And then they could still erase it. They had so much fun with this. They had several pages worth of these um, I spy books. So again, all it is, is you put objects on a shelf. You could put them on a desk, on the table, you know, whatever. And then you write all the objects down, describe them so that the kids have to find them and then put them in the little sheet protectors so that they can use whiteboard markers and then they just erase them. So number six, make your own I spy book. Number 17, bake cookie drop brownies. This is my own recipe. The link is included. Kids love this recipe. Side note, it is incredibly sweet. <laughs> it's a great sleepover treat. Again, kids love these. It is the easiest recipe in the world. I can't even claim a whole lot of creativity because it is so simple. Basically you take one brownie mix and one cookie dough mix. You mix them separately, put the brownies in the pan, and then you drop. So I usually make an eight by eight and then I drop nine 
dough balls of the cookie dough and press them into the brownie batter because an eight by eight kind of comes out perfectly into nine pieces and you bake it. So, so easy. Kids love it. It's easy for them to do with you. And of course they love eating it as well. So number 17, bake cookie drop brownies. Number 18, hide a book in five rooms. So five different books in five different rooms. Once the kids find the book, read it together. You could have an older sibling, read it to a younger sibling, or maybe they bring the book to you. Maybe you read it with them in the room that they found it in. Lots of different ways you can do that one. Hide a book in five different rooms and read once found. Number 19, create an outdoor scavenger hunt. So I already mentioned this before, had an indoor scavenger hunt. You can create one that is outside. If your kids are older, you could even send them to neighbor's houses if you want to get the neighborhood involved and actually have like a neighborhood scavenger hunt can be really, really fun. If you want to get, you know, super community oriented, you could have a picnic or a cookout afterward, but create a big outdoor scavenger hunt. Come up with the clues together. Number 20, dress up and have a tea party. (laughs) My youngest especially loves dressing up. She loves the heels, the dresses, et cetera. I did include a kit that has stuff that you can actually create for a tea party or maybe um, create it and just involve the little stuffed animals that reside in your children's bedrooms. 21, make homemade gummy bears. We did this once. We used these. um, I have the molds linked and they turned out okay. I think I did something wrong initially. I'm not sure what I did, but what I ended up doing is I used the molds, the gummy bear molds, and we melted chocolate and made chocolate gummy bears. That was much more successful. All you do is you just use like wafer chocolate or melting chocolate. You can't really use any chocolate. It doesn't taste as good, but get melting chocolate or dipping chocolate, melt it, pour it into these gummy molds. And then we put it in the freezer and they pop right out. 22 make homemade ice pops. So this is a little different than the one that I just said, but this mold actually is long ice pops. So I've included two different kits. I know this sounds like a repeat, but the kits included are slightly different, but this is the same idea as the ice cube trays. It's just actually in the shape of a larger ice pop. And this particular kit also includes, um, the, uh, sticks that go with it as well. Number 23, make a fort with chairs and blankets. Number 24, wait, did I just say 24? Nope, 23. 24, so many numbers. 24, hide four games and play them once found. Same concept, hide puzzles, hide games. I also included a bunch of our kids' favorite games. I'll run through those real really quick sequence for kids. Guess who? Shoots and Ladders, Monopoly Junior, Life Junior, Tenzi, Connect Four, Spot It, and Trouble. They also like Scrabble Junior is another one you could throw in there. Number 25, write a story. Number 26, read a story and act out the characters. 27, color. 28, create your own word search. Or you could just buy a little word search book that is age appropriate for your kids. Number 29, rollerblade. Number 30, paint. 31, create your own crossword puzzle. You can certainly do age appropriate crossword puzzles as well, but maybe challenge your kids. Um, you guys together, you can create your own crossword puzzle. 32, play kickball in the backyard. I did include this really fun. um, It's called Wicked Big Kickball. I included it in the links, but it's basically a massive ball on an adult. The ball comes like up to knee height. It just, it's a little bit easier to play in your backyard. It won't go quite as far. And, you know, the kids love it. In 10 seconds, your kids will just end up wrestling it unless they're different than mine. (laughs) Kickball quickly ends up with a ball this big. 
just getting laid on and rolled over. Number 33, have a picnic. Number 34, get up early and watch the sunrise with your kids and maybe with a picnic basket for breakfast, just on your back porch, in your backyard. Number 35, have a pillow fight. 36, play hide and go seek. This is really fun. I actually included it in the links. It's a card game. It is called card and go seek card and go seek. And basically you find the cards. Number 37, plant and decorate a flower kit, kit included. This one, um, we did not do this specific kit, but we did this with a random tin that I had left over from, I can't even remember what it was from or what was originally in the tin, but then Gracie painted on it and she had fun with that. And then we planted some sort of flower in it. I can't remember. It was several years ago, (laughs) which of course we don't have it anymore. Number 38, learn magic tricks. Number 39, play I spy in a bucket. There's actually a link to the game specifically. It's called I Spy Dig In. And it's basically I Spy uh, in a Bucket. Number 40, finger paint. 41, create your own library. Basically, it's like playing library, but you take a bunch of your kids' books. One person is the librarian. They arrange them. They can even number them. And then your kids and you or not you come in and, and, um, pretend to take out books from the library. And then you can sit and read them together. And then you return them 42, go for a hike 43, create a menu and then make it or play restaurant. If you will 44, make a zoo with stuffed animals and then go visit the zoo play jumbo Jenga. This is on my DIY to-do list. Have you guys seen this jumbo Jenga idea? Such a fun idea. These are so cool. I really want to do these myself. I feel like it's just like two by fours. You take two by fours, cut them into Jenga like pieces, but this jumbo Jenga ends up being, I think when it's totally stacked, I think it's almost my height, like five feet. Great game to play outside. Number 46, write your own play and then act it out. 47, play in a sprinkler. By the way, um, I had, I was just introduced to this idea. There are sprinklers for trampolines, specifically for trampolines that hook onto either the sides or you can put under the bottom. You could do this with just a normal sprinkler too, but you just need a little power to it, but put the sprinkler underneath the trampoline or just run through it. The old fashioned run through like we used to do growing up 48, write letters and mail them. Letters are one of the saddest things. I think that we are lacking in today's society. There's something so sweet about a written letter, written thank you cards, meaningful ones, encourage your children I would encourage you as adults to do this as well. There's something very rewarding, not just for the recipient, but also the giver, write letters and mail them. Maybe come up with a theme. Simple idea is ask your children each to think of one person that they're grateful for, and then have them write a letter to that person, simply saying three things they like most about that person. So, so simple. And then mail them. 49, turn old jeans into shorts and decorate. This is where those fabric markers can come back in. You can also glue um, sequins or or whatever you want to do. If you have little uh, like decals, whatever you want to do. You can even sew them on if you're handy with a sewing machine. I am not. So fabric markers or paint as well. And just have fun turning old jeans into shorts and decorate them however you want. Number 50, do science experiments. I did include a kit. It's called mind blowing science. There's 11 activities. Again, if you don't want to Google ideas, there is a kit included just fun ideas. Kid friendly 51 put on a magic show. There is a kit included as well. If you don't want to actually learn more complicated tricks, like I suggested earlier, there's a kit that the kids can have fun with 52 have a shaving cream battle. 
get your bathing suits on, run out to your backyard. Each of you gets one can of shaving cream. Whoever has the least amount of shaving cream on them at the end of the battle wins. 53, make a scrapbook. What happened to scrapbooking, right? Social media, like we no longer scrapbook. I used to scrapbook, not in a long, long time because we don't need to anymore. We have social media. It's like our, for me, my blog, I always call it a digital scrapbook. So anyway, it'd be kind of fun to go back to the old fashioned scrapbooking. Number 54, fly a kite. 55, play jumbo checkers. Kind of like jumbo Jenga, same idea. It's basically a really large checkerboard with oversized uh, checker pieces. 56, have a family cookout. Make sure that your kids are part of cooking the meal. Maybe have them plan the menu. 57, go snorkeling in your bathtub or your pool. 58, collect old toys and books for charity. There are tons of places for drop-off and pickup. We do this with Salvation Army. They have a pickup now. Ever since COVID, their their scheduling and availability has been much more, uh, it's been a lot tighter. So you kind of have to plan way ahead of time. There's also a lot of drop-off places, but Salvation Army in a lot of the areas around the country has a pickup option. Well, they will pick up bags from your front porch. They take more than just clothes too. They take toys, um, home items, but have your kids talk with your kids about why you're doing what you're doing and have them go through their toy boxes, their books, bag them all up and um, have somebody pick them up or drop them off. 59, create an obstacle course. Okay. Again, I linked it. You know, if your mind is only so creative and you're like, what do you mean by that? There is a kit included. This looks super fun. We've never done this. I've never done this kit, but they basically have a whole bunch of things in it to help you create your own backyard obstacle course. It looks like a lot of fun, but you could also get creative and just create obstacle courses based on what you have around your house. Number 60, play basketball together. Maybe play pig. Number 61, have a dance party. You guys, I have yet to meet a kid, elementary school age or younger, who does not love a dance party. You throw on some dance music and just start moving. They love it. Number 62, camp outside in your backyard. This one takes a little bit more effort depending on how hard it is to put your tent up, but your kids will not forget it. Camp outside. 63, have a water balloon fight. 64, go for a jog together. So one, one way that, um, with older kids, we've started to do this is like, I'll jog beside one of my kids riding their bike and we jog to like a local bakery, or we jog to a gas station, pick up a little treat. And then we go to a park. Um, great way to get exercise. Of course, I'm maybe negating it a little bit with the treat, but again, it's special time together. You're outside and there's no screens involved. Number 65, read books on a blanket outside with a snack. 66, press leaves or flowers in a book. 67, play trivia. 68, have a candlelit dinner. 69, create your own spa day. Maybe you do a face wrap with your girls or you do each other's nails. Maybe there's men in the house that enjoy massages. Maybe create your own massage parlor and, um, you know, you give each other massages. Just create your own, create your own spa day. 70, blow bubbles. 71, draw with fabric markers on old socks and then make a puppet show or have a puppet show. 72, take a bubble bath. (laughs) This one may sound even more appealing to the adults, but kids love it too. Take a bubble bath. Build with Legos. Build a huge train track. 
75 knockdown army men with rubber bands. My dad used to do this with my brother. I can still picture them doing it in his bedroom. They would set up those little green army men. Again, toe crunchers is really what they should be called. (laughs) These like green plastic army men that end up all over your floor that you step on in the middle of the night with your bare feet and you want to punch somebody. (laughs) That's really what these should be called, but they are a lot of fun. So what my dad used to do with my brother is they would set up all of these army men in his bedroom and then they would like duck behind something and they would take a whole container of rubber bands and they would shoot down the army men with these rubber bands. 76, build with magnetiles. If you are not familiar with magnetiles and you have um, elementary school age children, I would say like second or third grade and younger, you need to invest in magnetiles. These are so fun. My kids absolutely love them. I can't even really describe them well. They're tiles that are magnetic, but you can create all kinds of amazing things with them. The link is included as well in the show notes. 77, climb a tree. 78, make an outdoor fort. 79, play dress up. 80, decorate a cake. 81, decorate sugar cookies. 82, tell jokes. Kids love, like I said, we've done most of this list and the jokes are high on the, high on the um, love the most list of these hundred plus ideas. I did include a book. It's called the big book of silly jokes for kids. 800 plus jokes. I kids love telling jokes. I mean, who doesn't love telling jokes? 83, make a gingerbread house. 84, make a blanket with old shirts. I should actually do a DIY tutorial on this. I've done this multiple times. Um, Make a blanket out of fabric. There is no sewing required. And this is going to be really hard to describe how to do, but you basically cut any fabric, shirts, blankets, whatever. And you cut them in squares or rectangles. It doesn't matter which square rectangle you can pick one or the other, but all of the pieces should be approximately the same size. Approximately makes it easier. But what you do then is you take that square, that rectangle, whatever, and then you take a scissors and you cut. All right. For those of you watching, I'm going to show you with this tablet, pretend this is the fabric. You cut it all along the side like this creating little strips. And then you do the same thing here. And then you do it on this side. (laughs) You guys love this, this uh, DIY tutorial I'm showing you here. And then you cut it the whole way around it. You do this with all of the pieces and then you just tie the pieces together with those strips that you've cut. Hopefully that somewhat makes sense. I've done multiple blankets like this. It's really fun. I have one that we have used for years, years. Um, but then you tie all the pieces together and you can do two sides as well to make it a little bit thicker. Um, and then tie, uh, the, the big pieces all together, no sewing required, no sewing required. 85 have a paper airplane contest. I did include a link to a kit. We've never used this kit. But if you have a kid who's really, really into paper airplanes, this might be fun. Or just um, make them out of mail that you're about to throw away, which is 80% of the mail that we get. 86, learn to juggle. 87, have a squirt gun battle. This ends up being a yearly occurrence. So as a... um, an idea on Amazon. They have a pack. I actually should link it here. I didn't. They have a pack of, I think 30 water guns. I think it's like seven bucks. It's super cheap. So I always try to get a couple little things for the summer that are fun for the kids. This year, I got this pack on Amazon of 30 water guns. And then I also got, um, I think it might be coming up in this list, but I'll just say it now. I also got a, um, splash pad these little splash pads are so cheap. I think, I think the one I got was $20, maybe $20, 70 inches, 
um, in diameter, big, big splash pad. And it fills up with just enough water at the bottom that you can still fill up a water gun. So this is what makes it fun is we combine the two and they have water gun battles in the splash pad. 88, make new candles out of old ones. Uh, if you all have done this or not, but you basically just heat up leftover wax. It will get, well, it'll melt. And then you pour them into one glass jar. And then obviously you have to get one of the wicks that ultimately gets attached to the bottom. And then you just pour it in over the wick and then have the top piece sticking out. 89, play bingo. 90, build a playhouse out of cardboard boxes. 91, play charades. 92, make snowflakes with paper and scissors. If you have not done this before, this is an oldie, but a goodie. I remember doing this. You simply take a paper, you fold it several times. Oh, get ready. I'm going to use my pad again. Here we go. <laughs> so you take a piece of paper like this, and then you fold it several times, just in case none of you have ever done this. And then you take a scissors and you cut randomly into the sides of the folded square, the folded paper, like just cut, you can cut a circle into it. You can fold it and then cut something out of the center there too. I don't even know if you guys can see this. I'm probably not even in the camera, um, but then you cut it all up and then you open it and it's a snowflake. You can hang them. The kids can color them. 93, make your own soap. I have never done this. I included a kit. This would be fun to do sometime. There are a lot of ways to make your own soap. I included a kit again, for those of you that just want to keep it really simple. You can also Google this. I know there's ways to do it that are, are relatively simple using materials that you may or may not already have in your house. 94, paint a mural on your bathtub wall. This is a kid favorite in our house. Every single Christmas, I put bath paint in all of my kids' stockings. Gracie's 10 and she still loves this stuff. Um, so bath paint, super, super easy way for kids of just about any age to entertain themselves. They have paints, crayons, stamps, there's a lot of different like bath. Anyway, put your, have your kids put their bathing suits on and all get in together and uh, paint a mural on the bathtub wall and then they can surprise you with it. 95, set up an Easter egg hunt. Why limit this to Easter alone? If your kids are driving you insane and you need them out of your hair for a, <laughs> a blasted second. <laughs> oh, summer mom talking already here. I love my kids. Love my kids, but I'm grateful for our school system and so much respect for teachers. So you need them out of your hair for just one hour, one hour this summer, set up an Easter egg hunt, get out your plastic Easter eggs. Maybe you put something in them. Maybe you don't, maybe you just simply hide X number of Easter eggs and you tell your kids, look, you find all these Easter eggs and you can have a snack or you can have a treat. I don't know, whatever, whatever works for your children entertain themselves. I don't know about your kids. Mine just need a distraction, right? They get into that woe is me mentality, um, because they don't know what to do with themselves and they just need something to get them started. And then it's like the creative juices start flowing. That's what these ideas, not only to spend some quality time together with your kids, but also to help them start thinking creatively as well and entertain themselves. 96, Make greeting cards, have them actually make cards and then have them write that letter I suggested earlier. 97, make your own puzzle. Make your own puzzle um, is, you could do this a number of ways. I did include a link for what it is, is it's just blank puzzle pieces. We have done this a couple of times. It's just blank puzzle pieces that the kids put together. And then once the puzzle is done, they draw on it, draw with markers. They could put stamps, whatever. And then they take it apart and they put it together again. It's basically you're creating, drawing your own puzzle is what it is. 98, cook an ethnic meal. Anna, what do you mean by an ethnic meal? I just simply mean try cooking a meal that is from a different culture. Maybe it is not part of your normal 
routine or it's not food that you normally eat, but, you know, consider finding a different culture's cuisine as a family and challenge yourself to make a meal from that culture or phone a friend. <laughs> if you have a friend of a different ethnicity or a different culture, maybe have them shoot you some recipes. 99, write your own book or your own poems. 100, paint a picture frame. I did include a link for a picture frame. There's tons and tons and tons of ideas here. There is a list also on my website at hammersandhugs.com on today's show notes with links and pictures, et cetera, if you want some more ideas. And there's also a print out of these ideas. If you want to actually print out ideas, there's a checklist form that you can find and print off and be able to make memories together this summer as a family. And I want to point out not a single one of these requires a screen. These do not require a screen. Encourage your kids to spend screen-free time together as a family and have some quality summer fun in the sun. Hey guys, Anna here. If you found this video helpful, then you do not want to miss this video right here beside me on the screen. Click on it. I know you're going to enjoy it. You guys remember, you cannot be redefined, only redeveloped one imperfect day at a time. Your story matters and you are loved.